Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you guys how to track all of your school assignments in Google Sheets. I've done this myself and it helps me remember my assignments, study ahead of exams, and get good grades overall. And also it's a good motivator when you can see what you've done, be able to check it off a list, and see what you have left to do. Let's get started. So here I have a new sheet and we're going to call it School Assignments. And for each assignment we want the header of the due date of the assignment, the class that the assignment is for, a short description of what the assignment is, what type of assignment it is, such as a quiz or homework or an exam, and then finally the status of the assignment, whether it is complete or yet to be completed. So for a quick example, let's say we have an assignment due on March 1st, 2023, and we can also say that this is a calculus class. For our calculus class, we have chapter 6 quiz due. So then for type of assignment, we can just write quiz. And then for status, what I'm going to do is insert and select checkbox. So now we can select check if it's done or leave it unchecked if it's not done. And with that, I filled in kind of a random example of classes and assignments someone might have for a few weeks. It might not make the most sense, but just take it for what it is. It's going to be a good example for what we do in this video. When you make your own sheet, you'll want to consult the course schedules that all your professors give you and enter your class times and assignments appropriately. So what I'm going to do besides fixing a few typos I made is format this a little bit better. So first what I want to do is change the font of the entire sheet by clicking here and going to font, selecting Montserrat, my favorite font. And then for our headers here, I'm going to make it a bold text with a blue background, we'll pick this blue, and a white text color. Also to save some space, I will resize column A to size 25. And additionally, to make everything a little more visible, I'm going to select our entire range here, and then go to borders, and select all borders. It makes each cell pop a little bit more. And then I'm going to highlight the entire range besides the headers, and go to format, alternating colors, and deselect header, hit done. So now you can see everything a little bit better. And then I'm also going to want to format each column a little bit differently. So first for the due date column, I'm going to select all of column B by hitting the B up here. And then I'm going to select format, number, and scroll down to custom date and time. And what I can do here is select in here and delete all of these to start from scratch. And now I'll be able to properly format the due date. I personally like knowing the day of the week that each assignment is going to be due rather than just the date. So to do that, we're going to click this little drop down menu here and then select day. Then we can click on day again here and select day as full name, Tuesday. So now we can move along formatting our date by adding a comma, we want a comma after Tuesday, and then we have to hit the space bar to add another space so it doesn't look awkward. Then we go back to this drop down menu and select the month. We select back in here after the month, we want a slash, select the drop down menu, day. After day, another slash, drop down menu, year. Now we can hit apply, and the last thing I'm going to do is resize this column to size 170 to fit everything in, hit OK. And you can see all the dates properly formatted with the day of the week as well as the day, the month, day, and year. I'm going to highlight this whole range and center it as well. Next we can format the class column by highlighting the range from the top of our data to the bottom of our data. So that's row 3 to row 22. And what I'm going to do here is make a drop down menu so that each time we add an assignment, it's easier to get the class rather than typing it in every time. And it's also going to format each class by color. So I'll show you what I mean. We're going to select data, data validation. And then here, we're going to add a new rule. Instantly, drop down is what pops up. So we're going to keep it as drop down. But we're going to select a few options for classes. We have first, biology. Second, calculus. And we're going to add another item. Third is history. Under advanced options, I'm going to change the style from chip to arrow. I think it looks way better. And then I can also change the color of each. So for biology, we'll make it a, an orange color. 
calculus will make it a red color and history purple uh, i'm going to change calculus to yellow yeah that looks good so now we can hit done x out of this i'm going to center this again to make it look a little bit better and for the size uh, i guess we could keep it there for now i'm going to resize the column up to size 120 just in case a class with a larger name comes into play for the assignment column all we have to do is select column d and we're going to resize it to 350 to allow us plenty of room to type in extra information about our assignments here for the class column all i'm going to do is add conditional formatting so that each type of assignment has its own color so it makes everything a little more visible so to do that again we highlight our range of data from rows 3 to 22. Format, conditional formatting, and I'm going to select the format cells if box here, and then I'm going to format the cell if the text contains the word class, and then make it this yellow color. We can hit done, and then X out here, and now it's a lot easier to see which of these are just going to class. And I'm quickly going to make colors for the rest of these types and then come back. Okay, and now that that's all set, you can see that each type of assignment is sorted by color, which makes everything a little bit easier to analyze. And finally, I'm going to add one more piece of conditional formatting to the checkboxes here by going to Format, Conditional Formatting. And I'm going to have to apply this to range B3 to F22. So it's gonna encompass this entire plot of data here. And what I wanna do is make sure that when I click off a checkbox, it highlights the entire row so I know it's done. So again, I'm gonna to go to Format Cells If and scroll down this time to a custom formula. All I have to do here for the custom formula is write in equals dollar sign F3, since F3 is our first checkbox. And then I'm going to make the fill color green, light green, and have a strike through for all the text. So if I hit done, X out, I can test this by, say, I finish my homework. Now, the only problem here is that the entire row does not get the strike through in the green because the type of assignment overtakes the green in the strike through. To change that, I'm going to click back on this homework cell go to format, conditional formatting, and we have all the format rules that affect this cell here. And I'm gonna click on this, these like few dots here, and drag it up to the top. So now this takes precedent and crosses out homework as well as turning it green. And that's basically it for this tracker. It's pretty simple. Let me X out of here. Uh, one more thing I wanna add is I'm gonna highlight this entire range here and go to data, create a filter, this way you can sort uh, by class, for example, sort A to Z. And now you have each class um, with all of their assignments, so I can easily see, oh, I have four quizzes for calculus, and I can plan out how I'm gonna get those done in a better way. But I'll just undo to get this back to normal. When adding an assignment, all you have to do is insert a row. So I can click on row three, insert one row above, and then let's say there's an assignment due 315. Um, again, the drop down menu works here. It's for calculus. Uh, it's a pop quiz. So I write pop quiz, type quiz, and then once it's done, I can check it off as done. Functionally, how I like to use this when I'm in my classes, so I'll uncheck these boxes. I will probably sort um, the due date mostly. That's like the main sort and I'll sort it from A to Z. So when you're starting your semester, the classes at the beginning or the assignments at the beginning are what you're gonna encounter first. And then as I finish, I will check it off and then say these were the two things I finished that day. At the end of the day, I'm gonna go back to the status column filter and then sort A to Z. That moves everything checked off to the bottom. So you have what is due next back at the top and what is already completed moved down to the bottom. When you have a full semester with five or six classes and hundreds of assignments, this is a lot easier than just our 20 assignments here. And it really allows you to see all your progress too. 
Um, and before I leave you, one other quick tip that I like to do is at the beginning of the week, I take all the assignments from that week. So for this one, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'll choose a color to make those dates that week so I can see that this is what I have to do this week. And then once those are all complete, check them off, again, sort A to Z, and then do it all over again the next week. So that's pretty much it for my school assignment spreadsheet. Uh, I hope this is helpful for you in your classes, and it's something that you can really use. If it is, and if you learned something, I'd appreciate a like. And as always, thanks for watching.